no mato to my langi mato faf tide in the yas where they tain a mile la to soy four mother mato walla mato amataina the nefa moi moi mato to want to ya to the mato to my if so sunny my a win a mile or hang in him fire no ma foot on my mato in him fern fat on winner and they love for fang of my yas from near foy I lato or sound near presentation my mato in him fire on the mato langona fatas. Mamato Moel, if you fear to some of the Nefa Moe. Our Father in heaven, we give thee thanks for our many blessings, grateful for this beautiful day and the opportunity for us to come together as uh, Pacific uh, people and be able to learn from each other and tell Anoa and pray that thou will bless us, and especially those who will be doing presentation that uh, they will be able to uh, um, <clears throat> present in a way that will help every one of us enjoy this session and pray for those who will be facilitating as well and uh, ask that I will guide us throughout the remainder of this session. We humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. We give our utmost thanks to our matours who have blessed us uh, for this day. We can't do the work that we do without them, so we acknowledge our matour. Mā lulele, talo falava, whakalo falahi atu, ki arana, ni saa Kia ora. My name is Nat, Natalie Ledger, and I hold the absolute honour and privilege of being the manager of Faliola, which is our community Pacific mental health service. I am Tongan. You can't guess by looking, but uh, within my heart, absolutely, I'm third generation New Zealand born. And most importantly, I'm a nurse and very proud to stand here today for us to come together as we, uh, we talk about uh, building bridges and that's about pr professional growth uh, for our Pacific nurses. To start with, I suppose what I wanted to say is, is I want to give our thanks, um, give our absolute acknowledgement to our families, to our support people, to our parents, our, our grandparents, and for me, as my great-grandparents who came to this land of what, milk and honey to give us better opportunities. And so we can't do what we do without them, and so we have them here with us, as we know today, and we honour them. <coughs> to Josephine, who is the lead of our Pacific Nurses Leadership Group, um, you know, Josephine is a champion ensuring that we have opportunities like this, the Talanoa, to come together. So we thank you, Josephine, and to the Pacific Nurse Leaders for this opportunity. To our other leaders that are here today who ensure that we have the opportunities to grow and develop in the way in which we need to so that we can serve our people. We acknowledge Jane Earle, who is the uh, Clinical Nurse Director for uh, Mental Health Services. Uh, we have Denise Black here with us also, who is our uh, nurse educator. She is the lady who ensures that we know everything that we need to know. But right through the whole organisation to our Don and to others who give us the opportunities that we need um, in order to grow. It is just so wonderful to see all of these student nursing badges here today. You are our future. Um, we, uh, you know, we want to assure you that today we give you our commitment to ensure that your journey is as good as it needs to be. We're really, really proud of you all. We need you to know that, how proud we are that you are doing what you're doing and that you're going to come out shortly. And our, I suppose, what we want to say is we are here. We're absolutely here to support you and, and you know, if you need us. Want to give thanks to the Pacific Mental Health Nurses who are here today, who have brought themselves along to share with you um, some of the work that they do and the journeys that we experience um, within mental health. As you all know, having Pacific people, serving Pacific people 
absolutely makes a difference to our health outcomes. And you know, we can only but encourage you all to you know, share with others about what a great and rewarding uh, career it is to be a nurse. And today we are going to show you what a wonderful, rewarding career it is to actually work within the mental health sector. There's a lot of myths, there's a lot of unknowns, there's a lot of things that people think about mental health and of course for us as Pacific there's a lot of considerations that we need to have in terms of the, the cultural thoughts, perceptions um, surrounding mental health. So I honour and acknowledge every single one of you as a cultural expert for those who are also going to be clinical experts and those who currently are. Um, the challenge for us is how do we go to share that with our colleagues? We have a huge, as you know, we've got the biggest Pacific population on the planet here in County Monaco. We have a duty to serve. We're not going to be able to care for our people in ethnic specific services. So we have to ensure that we share our cultural knowledge with our colleagues wherever you are. Finally, I just wanted to say that health is mental health. Whether you are considering to end up in mental health or not, wherever you are, you can always consider the mental health and well-being of the person who's before you and their family. So if there's one thing we hope you take away with you today, and that is absolutely no matter where you are, no matter what area you're working in, health is about mental health. So. It's wonderful to have you all here. Thank you for creating the space for us to come into Talanoa. Matua was sharing with me just before we began about how this is our way. And he talked about how back home and in the village, this is how we learn. We come together, we talk and we share. And so we're really excited to be able to present to you today um, Pacific Mental Health. Mālo pito. Mālo. Uh, my name is Angeline Heko. I'm from the Pacific Islands. I will be your um, facilitator or um, MC for today. And I first would like to invite. Um, oh, first of all, I am the clinical nurse lead. And Clinical nurse specialist, nurse lead from Faleola Services. Been in Faleola since we started way back in 1999. Been a nurse since I left um, high school. Started off as psychopedic nursing, and now still in mental health. We will hear from um, Josephine as our opening um, speaker. Talo falava malole, fakalo falahiatu kiorana kiora. Um, and um, greetings to you all. I just thought maybe to, uh, before I start, just to kind of break the ice a bit because I think everyone's still a bit, you know, um, I don't know, waking up or... <laughs> um, what I thought I'd, I'd like you to do first, um, just to get to know each other a little bit uh, before I speak, is just to go and meet, meet one person that you've never met before and say hello and introduce yourself. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that and then come back and sit down. For those of you who um, don't know what Talanoa is, Talanoa is a word used, it's commonly used in the uh, Pacific, to talk, to dialogue, to discuss, to debate, and, this is, and to present, to share your stories. This is what Talanoa is about. And it's a concept that was um, adopted from ADHB uh, Pacific Nurse Leaders, which we have now... Um, started here at Counties last year. And um, thanks to the um, Pacific Nursing and Midwifery Leaders, we're able to have Talanoa with the support of our Director of Nursing, Denise Kibble, and also Thelma um, Thompson, our Director of Midwifery. So I'd like to welcome you all. Um, ta lofa, ta lofa lava. Um, as Angeline um, introduced me, I am Josephine Samuelu, the Manager for the Future Workforce Team. And it's a real priv privilege 
um, and an honor for me to be up here to speak to you all this morning. And I'm so happy to see all of you. Every Talanoa we've had, we've seen new faces, met new nurses. And this is another thing about the Talanoa, is that it's a networking forum where you can come together, meet other Pacific and non-Pacific nurses to find out what they're doing, where where they're working um, in the areas of serving this community here in counties. So I want to um, congratulate you for being here and thank you also for being here. Um, so our theme today as you look in your program is Building Bridges, Professional Growth for Pacific Mental Health Nurses. Um, and Building Bridges is something that as Pacific people we're very good at because we love to tell Anoa. Um, I also want to acknowledge the midwives and we've got a midwife, a community midwife, um, Sarai Tepo, who'll be speaking today as well. Um, and they are quite a big, well, an important part of Talanoa as well, to talk about what they do in the community um, and serving our Pacific people. Building bridges, you know, when I think of the work that the mental health nurses do, in particular the Pacific mental health nurses, and the years that I've known Angeline and also uh, Nat, we come from the same generation of nurses who studied back in the, well, 80s, 90s, maybe earlier than that. Um, so we've been around for a while working in the health sector. And it was only a handful of us. Um, I actually studied in the Wellington School of Nursing. And of a class of 100, there were only five of us Pacific and only three of us past state final, and I was one of them. So it was quite um, a lonely time being a Pacific student um, in working in a very, um, I suppose, Balangi world, coming straight from high school into um, studying nursing. But one of the nurses that actually helped me in my early years of nursing was a mental health nurse, a Pacific mental health nurse who gave so much of her life and her time um, to helping other nurses, particularly Pacific nurses. And one of the things that I learned from, mental, from her experience, uh, experience in mental health is how to um, develop a rapport and a relationship with patients. And it's about building bridges, not only with patients, but also with the staff that I worked with at the time. Um, and over the years, I've seen the mental health sector really lead in this area of building bridges, especially around professional development. And they're leading in nurses who have achieved their master's degrees and have gone on to be um, quite influential leaders within the health sector around the cultural competency training and um, developing initiatives around clinical and cultural competency um, have been led by a lot of mental, uh, Pacific mental health nurses. Um, and with the support of organizations like LEVA, and um, I just want to acknowledge all the work that the Pacific mental health nurses have done over the years, and it's not just here in counties, but um, also um, nationally as well. Um, I also want to um, congratulate and acknowledge those um, who have completed their masters but have also dedicated and committed their time in growing other nurses, um, mental health nurses, to come through, not just academically but professionally as well. We're seeing a lot more mental health nurse leaders come through. We're seeing a lot more students who are interested in working in mental health because they've been given the support and the mentoring as students in their clinical placements in places like Faleola and Te Ahumai and the Pacific um, Community Mental Health Services. And so I want to congratulate and um, thank you for the work that you've been doing and that I know you'll continue to do and continue to be strong in what you do and leading the way and building those bridges, not only professionally but also clinically as well. So Nat, um, congratulations to you and your team and to the others who are here from various mental health services. Um, Keep on keeping on. And like Nat said, and I wrote it down, health is about mental health. And that's what I learned as a student in my career of 20 so years in the health sector. Um, but it's part and parcel of what you do as a Pacific nurse. And there's a lot of giving, 
but I also um, believe and have experienced there's a lot of receiving as well from the experience, from patients as well as colleagues. Um, and I, yeah, I also want to um, acknowledge the midwives as well and the work that they've been doing, who have been quite a small, small workforce of Pacific midwives. We only have 10 here at Counties, but we pop out the most babies here in New Zealand. Pacific babies, that is, you know. And so they're another workforce that we also need to support and encourage to help them also bridge the gaps, particularly around the workforce shortage. And a lot of the work that the current Pacific midwives are doing are supporting our current students who are studying through AUT midwifery program to also come through. And hopefully within the next three years, we would have tripled our Pacific midwifery workforce. Um, so I'd just like to um, thank the mental health nurses and also the midwives for leading today and congratulate you all on the work you're doing. I'm looking forward to hearing your initiatives and just want to um, also let you know that um, if you need any support in the work you're doing, um, please come and see me, come and talk to me. My office is in <laughs> the support building on the third floor. I'll probably be bombarded now. Um, but it's a good thing because that's what we're there to do, not only to serve our colleagues, but also to serve, you know, our people and our community. So for Te Lava, Ma Lord Suifua. Thank you. We will now hear from our first speaker, our second speaker, new graduate um, Manu Langi, and he will we will hear from him and, and make sure, and we will um, learn something new from him. I hope. Good morning to you all. Uh, my name is Manu, Senem Lang, as stated in the uh, agenda for today. Yeah. And uh, I'm a Tongan. I arrived in New Zealand in 1993 and I um, got my permanent rest in ni late 94, so I start my study. I start studying in MIT in 95, in various fields. I uh, end up, I got no job. And it looks to me that uh, looking for a job is, the, is harder than um, having your qualification. So uh, some of my friends invite me to come and study nursing. But uh, the question is, back in the island, by culture, nursing is a female thing. It's not a male thing. So it's, uh, that kind of view uh, hold me back from studying nursing in an um, earlier uh, age. So, uh, and uh, up to a time that um, during the recession, during recession, before recession, I was studying carpentry and thought that in building industry, I'm going to get some more money from there and um, have a better life. But the uh, recession uh, kicked in and things goes around and, and, and it doesn't work the, the way that I thought. So I, I used to look at the uh, newspapers, ads, and I uh, found that the uh, nursing career pop up m most of the time. So uh, these things, um, that thing uh, encouraged me to try nursing. So I, uh, 2010, I, I enrolled for the first semester at MIT, and I take the Bachelor of Nursing. And uh, yeah, and during the uh, the recession, that one of the highlights that um, that encouraged me is the uh, the job available for nursing. So that's one of the highlights for me. And during my study, I found out that one of my, my lecturer, lecturer, I say a Tongan, that uh, is a nursing, is doing nursing, that's Shonevaka, which is uh, very encouraging, you know. <laughs> so the, uh, the, the load of, uh, of the cultural view start getting lighter and lighter. And, and not only that, but the, um, So Shonevaka was one of the first three uh, nursing recruitment to the, in the uh, island. And um, 
In, during my uh, clinical placements, I found out that Tawake uh, Kahau is also a Tongan doing nursing. So these things is, is um, for others, they may not look at that as a encouraging, but for me, uh, male nurses over there, no problem there. <laughs> so the, uh, during the course of study, there were lots of, of challenges, but I'll talk a, a few. Because of, um, like, uh, as everyone knows, that the financial is, is one of the, uh, the most uh, challenged to everyone in the time. But lucky I was staying by myself in the time. It's sad to separate my ex-wife, but it's good in terms of financial. I, uh, I sometimes I, I end up with just uh, uh, $40 a week. And from that, uh, that's my, for my petrol and my food, and I asked my elder brother to pay my power bill every month <laughs> for that period of time. And, and, and also, the, uh, one of the things that uh, was challenging was I had to, to modify my lifestyle, which is the first time for me to modify my lifestyle to fit uh, what I'm doing. One of the, th of the uh, concept that um, pop up in the first semester at MIT, if you do exercise regularly, it's gonna help your motivation, your concentration, and your, your brain activity, you're gonna make it better. So I forced myself to take, go to the gym and register to the MIT and the um, Otara Community Gym, and I found it, it works well. And during the course of study, there were the concepts of, um, of, men, on, of mental health pop up many times. And it was very interesting because it's, uh, they have a different view from our traditional point of view about mental health. Usually it's, uh, it's caused by an um, evil spirit. And the traditional healer just come in with a few uh, leaves and mix them and then treat the patient. After three minutes, it's gone, it's done. See, back to normal, the patient back to normal. But in here, the Western view or, or what we're doing here is very different. So these are the kind of things that uh, really um, push me to the direction of, uh, of mental health. I, I feel it's very interesting. It's good to explore. It's, it's good to discover that area and find what, why it's there. And also the, the minimum number of the Tongan nurses are doing mental health. I don't know why. So the best thing to, to do to understand it is to put myself in a nursing in mental health and to find out by myself. And the, um, and, and also during the course of study, there were people that encouraging me, encouraging me to do to the um, come to mental health and work over there, not only because of a lot of jobs, the pay, uh, and a few other things. And in my time if, of my clinical placements in Manukau Community Mental Health and also in the Furinaki, they are the, um, I can say that they are the foundation for me to really say yes to the mental health. They, they're very supportive. They also encourage me to go in mental health, uh, working together with the um, Pacific people especially the Tongans over there, I, I, I feel in my heart it's, that's a, the thing that I have to take because I'm not helping myself, but I'm helping my people. And not only that, but the, the rest of the BI people. Uh, and one thing that I, uh, I see that uh, few of our people doing uh, nursing that they're taking mental health but for those that are um, doing mental health, I say Tabake is an example, he still survived and he's still doing well. So, okay, I can do well too. <laughs> so, yes, we have to take the, uh, the nursing career. And the, um, for this uh, new grad program, apart from passing the, uh, expecting to pass the competencies required the course that I'm do, taking it the, um, doing with the uh, uni, 
and so on, also to secure a, a job for the next year after this uh, new grid program. I want to know more about the, uh, the workplace as much as possible, the different level in the workplace where I'm working. Uh, currently, I'm in Huya Ward, but after this, I'll go to Cottage. So I know there are two, there are two different settings. I, I have to, to, to learn more as much as possible while I'm in, um, in my place, new grad placements. And also to, to understand or to know who to contact to in what issue. Uh, like one, it, uh, we, I was, um, a patient asked me to, to call the doctor. And I uh, go to the whiteboard and found the doctor's name and find the number and call him and found out that um, one of the senior nurses told me, no, you don't have to call those in, on the top. The second, the, the one that is next, not the consultant, the next one down. So I go that way. So that's the kind of, of understanding I wish to be very good in doing that during my uh, inpatient and also when I'm going to the community. Not only that, but uh, I wish to do as uh, much as possible in terms of paperwork, like discharge, admission. I remember in terms of discharge, I was um, given help on doing one of the discharges. My, that's my, my first discharge. And most of it, I, I, I didn't do it well. And, and the, an email came back to my uh, preceptor and says, Please train him well. So these are the kind of things that, that for those that have been in the field for long times, it's not a big deal of you. But for us new grad, I wish to, to help the, um, the workplace, the ward or the community um, placement that, that I'm going to work with to, to make an improvement in a sense as a foundation for those the new grad to come in the future to have an uh, easier life than me. Maro a bit. Fakawelahi ya manu. To uh, the next presenters, when you're up here, can you please put the mic up to your, up here? So, because we're also recording. One of the things that, uh, quite a few points that uh, Manu talked about, role models and um, mental health uh, nursing and we can, there are some role models here. So probably in the future, Manu, there will be other people who will be along their nursing career will look up at you as a role model. And we have heard about uh, Siane Vaka, who's also the original um, nurse from Faleola Services. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Manukau Community Mental Health Centre and Firinaki, the two services that um, nurtured Manu, so he was able to choose mental health to come into because most of the, the Pacific nurses came to Faleola and after that they chose um, to come back to mental health but I'd like to acknowledge those um, services. Now we will hear from our um, nurses from Vakatoa team, child and adolescent mental health Firinaki, uh, Lotte, Makoni and Madonna. <coughs> So, talo falava, malo lele, kia orana, whakalo falahiatu, and warm Pacific, gre Pacific greetings to you all. Um, my name is Lotte, and together with my colleagues, Makoni and Madonna, um, we'll, we're going to share a little bit about um, our experience of what it's like to be a Pacific nurse um, at CAMS. Um, just to outline a bit about our presentation, um, first I'll explain a little bit about um, what CAMS is and uh, a bit about our service and then hand over to these lovely ladies um, so they can share a bit about their experience. <laughs> so whiranaki. Um, whiranaki actually is a Māori word that means depend or translated support um, and we're a service based out in East Tamaki. Um, so we service the county's Manukau DHB catchment area um, for children from the ages of four all the way up to 18, depending on if they're still in school. Um, and we're like set up in a kind of a team situation. So we have um, four general teams, um, two general youth teams, and two general child teams. 
um, a kaupapa Māori team um, who service the Māori referrals that um, come through, and then we have the Pacific team. So a little bit about the Pacific team. The name of our team is Vakatoa, um, and translated that means the strength of our journey, and it's a new way in term. Um, how we differ from other teams um, is that we engage families um, with cultural support from our matua um, and also uh, Rarotongan or Akukalan um, matua. Um, so we were, our team was established back in 2008 just with the view of Pacific clinicians servicing the Pacific community, um, for, especially for the children and the adolescents coming through. Um, so we're all Pacific clinicians. Um, that's a photo that I stole from Matua. <laughs> um, that's the, our most recent photo, and so um, it doesn't include most of our team. Um, so we have Fijian, um, Tongan, Cook Island, New Wayan, um, <coughs> clinicians on board, uh, uh, and someone. <coughs> it's very important. Um, the nature of our referrals is. Um, suicidality, I guess, in the young um, adolescents, um, self-harm behavior in the children that come through, um, and also depression. Um, so our team work in a assertive outreach approach. So we try our best to meet with families wherever they feel comfortable, because as you all know, we're from big families, and one parent can't come out and just, you know, to our clinic sometimes, especially out in East Tamaki. So we try our best to meet families wherever they feel comfortable, um, usually at home. So we do a lot of home visits and school visits just to make it more easier on the families and the um, young people. Um, we also do duty ying, um, not triaging. Um, so we try our best, um, we have a duty clinician allocated to our team um, with the goal of ensuring that the initial contact families have with our service is with the Pacific person. Um, and we also assess and treat in a routine situation, also um, in urgent situations. So we see f families that come through ED during work hours. Um, we see kids at school if um, school guidance counselors are concerned and also at the police station and other fun places. Uh, we also hold groups as well um, for young, young people who kind of don't feel comfortable with the one-on-one. -on -one. So the dealing with the stress group is for the self-harm kind of referrals, um, an alcohol and drug group, um, an anger group for boys mainly, um, and an incredible years parenting program. Um, and all of these are tailored to the more Pacific way of delivering um, a group. Um, and most of the groups that us girls hold uh, at school as well, so we don't really work, require them to come into the clinic unless they're able to. Um, and we also do a lot of community liaising, hence our cool uniforms, so you can see us from afar. <laughs> um, so we've we've got um, like we we've had stores in the past um, at uh, Fobo, which was a recent like community event, so that was for Otara by Otara, and just kind of networking with other services that provide um, services to youth and children, um, just to ensure that um, the profile of the Vakato team in, is out there for um, parents to kind of know and find out. Um, so it's a bit about the context of where we come from um, and our work. So I'll now hand over to my colleagues just to share a bit, about, a bit more about their experience being a nurse in our service. Thank you, Lotte. Malo Lele, Talofa Lava, Kiolana, Fagalofa Lahiatu, Pula Vinaka, and many more Pacific Island greetings. My name is Marco Nikina Sobahavea. I was born in Hapai, Tonga Island, on the 7th of Feb, 1986. So I'm really young. Uh, <laughs> My mother is from Hapai and my father is from Malau. I am the eldest girl and the second child out of five. My family migrated to, to the main island of Tonga, which is Tonga Tapu, before my second birthday. I was brought up in Haveluloto in Tonga Tapu, where I attended the Kamamen Primary School of Fanga Levu. In 1996, I, um, in, I set the college entry exam and attended Tonga High School in 97. 
Unfortunately, on the 15th of January 1997, my mother passed away at home. Sadly, I buried my mom on the first day at high school. So this was the first day I was meant to be at school, so I didn't end up going to school. Due to us being young and my father working full time, we had to move and stay with my auntie and cousins in another village and left my dad behind. On the 21st of May 2001, my family migrated to New Zealand. I still remember on arrival, remember walking out of the airport of the Auckland airport and thinking, well, this is it, things will change. In June 2011, I attended Marsling College. For those of you who don't know Marsling College, it's the best go at Catholic school in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and what a day. I still remember my first day at school walking into class and everyone stared at me. I remember being scared at lunchtime, not knowing who to hang out with. And of course, I have to speak English. In 2007, I lost one of my closest cousins which I refer to my brother, um, he completed suicide. In 2008, another cousin of mine completed suicide. I remember my father struggled to find a job when we first moved here and struggled to pay my school fees. I remember sharing rooms with my two cousins and oh no, there was no privacy at all. Um, I remember going to school and struggled to make friends. I remember moving from house to house due to overcrowding. I graduated from the University of Auckland in 2009 with a Bachelor of Nursing. I'm currently working at Philanaki in Tawakato Pacific team as a registered nurse and has been there since 2011. So you must be all wonder why camps, why am I sharing my stories and why a Pacific mental health. <coughs> from my life experience, I can relate to my clients in many ways, although some of them I've come I met and have come across more challenging things in their life compared to mine. However, I have learned a lot from working with these young people. Some of the things I can relate to them are what is it like being in a new environment, migrating to a new country, dealing with Pacific parents, Yep, <laughs> high expectation from mom and dad. Grief, what is it like to lose someone special in your life? And so on. But overall, I am Pacific and I can speak fluent Tongan as well. I love being a Pacific nurse because that's what makes us different from other nurses. We have been trained for so many years how to become a nurse and to follow best practice. Don't you all love that? But with our warm Pacific heart, our love and respect to our clients, families, that's what makes us unique from other nurses. Malo Alpito. Salo for lover and warm Pacific greetings. Olo um, ingoa o Madonna Desla. That's Sadly, one of the very few things I can say in Samoan. Um, <laughs> but I am a registered nurse on the Vakatoa team. I pretty much started with them when they uh, started in Firinaki, so that was about five years ago. So I'm pretty old compared to these other two, but I convinced them to come back. So um, recently I attended a Pacific Leadership Workshop. It was very inspirational and motivational, I suppose. Um, and which is why we're sharing our stories today because from what I took from that, it was like we learnt more from learning from others. Um, and that just made me question, what made me different to other non-Pacific nurses? So here's my story. Uh, I was born in Western Samoa and I left there when I was only a few months old where my parents decided to move to Australia. For five years, my parents, as you can see, my dad is Balangi, New Zealand European, and my beautiful mother on the side, she is Samoan. They both struggled to overcome financial difficulties as well as racial. We eventually moved to New Zealand um, when I was five, six. It was a new climate and new school, new faces, just new everything. And 
But the best thing was I was no longer the only brown in town. So I think it's fair to say, like Gwini says, we come across a lot of people who have challenges that are a lot harder than what we have to face. Um, but, you know, from the years that pursued from when I was, when we first got to New Zealand, there were challenges that I realised that I could relate to with our young people, and that's probably one of the main reasons why I'm still in CAMS today. Um, so some of these things that I relate to our clients, I can relate to understanding the value of my mum leaving her home and her family in Samoa. And I can relate to the Pacific parents' expectations and obligations. I can relate to dysfunctional families and relationships, as I'm sure we all can relate to. Um, I can relate because I have failed and I can also relate to our young people because I have achieved. But above all of those things, um, the main thing I can relate to is because I'm a Pacific person. I argue with my dad about these things all the time because him being Balangi, he doesn't see it. He sees me for me. Everyone should be treated equally, he says. And I understand that, but what he doesn't understand is equally from whose view? The Asian, the Balangi, the Samoan, the Tongan, you know, American, Indian, we all have our different views. So in my world, my Pacific view, I see what he doesn't see. And because of that, that's what makes the difference. If you ask me to articulate what that is exactly, I can't. It's an ongoing and evolving process. What I took from the workshop that I attended is that it's all about our values as a Pacific culture that help us to unite our understanding of care. Love, family and respect, all important values for every culture, I'm sure. But it's the way that this care is executed that makes the difference. So it's from taking your shoes off at the door when you go to a client's house, from to accepting a cup of tea, to keeping your mouth shut for almost an hour while your cultural advisor speaks to the parents or the grandparents in Samoan. And I'm sitting there going, oh my gosh, what are they saying? <laughs> So, you know, altogether, it's just those small subtleties that we take for granted that are already ingrained in us from our Pacific culture. You can train someone to be a nurse, but you can't, them, can't make them a Pacific nurse. You're just born with it, and that's what makes the difference. So I'd just like to say thank you for everyone attending and listening to our stories. Um, I'll just open the floor up if there's any questions that you have for us about our CAM service.